Indonesian financial system was in a stable condition, which was in the range of 0.46. On the other hand, UCMFC recorded that the fluctuated movement were at the first quarter of 2012, it was 0.56 and that in, then it rose to 0.58 and dropped to 0.54. Uh, so the UCMFC is more able to describe what is happening and we use it for calculating weights. Okay. Uh, it can be seen that the highest weight value in the financial soundness index is return on asset. In the financial development index is market capitalization over GDP. In the financial vulnerability index is real exchange rate growth. And the word and in the word economic climate index is economic climate index. So overall, the indicator that ha has the highest weighting among among all dimensions is market capitalization over GDP. And word economic climate index is the dimension that has the highest weight. Okay. Uh, next. This figure shows the FC comparison before and after the addition of the money transaction ratio. It can be seen that the addition of the EMTR tends to have the same pattern as before, but produce FC, which tends to be higher in the last four periods. This is due to the rapid increasing contribution of money transactions in 2018 in Indonesia. Um, to find out whether the data from the two series have compatible movements or not, we can do the compatibility test. It concluded that in the period uh, 2009 until 2018, FC with and without EMTR has shown different movements. It indicates that the presence of Imani as a component of FC calculation can change the movement of financial system stability index. Furthermore, if we divide the period, uh, it can compute that the existence of the money transaction ratio has yeah, okay. Uh, it can conclude that the existence of the money transaction ratio has not been able to significantly affect the value of the financial system stability index before 2012. However, starting in 2012, it indicates that the existence of the email transaction ratio has been able to change the movement of the financial system stability index. Therefore, the rapid increase in email transaction should not be ignored in measuring financial system stability in Indonesia. Based on the results and analysis, it can be concluded that first, aggregate financial stability index can be used as an alternative to measuring Indonesia's financial stability to an observed component model is better to be used as a weight in the construction of FC. Three, the most influential indicators are market capitalization over GDP, while the most influential dimensions are uh, is the World Economic Climate Index. The EMTR or Emani Transaction Ratio indicator contrib contributes positively to financial st uh, stability and needs to be added in the construction of FC. So the FC is more relevant to the current times and will produce a higher quality financial stability index, which can properly describe the actual conditions of financial system. Recommendations that can be given are in monitoring or analyzing financial stability, even these indicators should be included from now onwards to reduce the pressure on the global economy, Indonesia should be improving the quality of domestic goods, human resources, uh, conducive business climate, climate, uh, etc. <clears throat> For further research, we can make a seek by using different methods of normalization, weighting, and aggregation, and then forecasting a seek for the next period. Uh, that's all my for my presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Re Inoyani Srega, uh, for a very interested, interested, interesting presentation. And also, of course, congratulations, because you manage your time very well. You, you, your presentation within seven minutes. 
Now, mm -hmm. without further ado, without further ado, I would like to introduce our spe spe second speaker for this uh, session, uh, Ms. Uh, YGR Ishanti Kolatilaka. Uh, uh, she currently working as a senior statistician for the National Statistics Office in Sri Lanka. Ms. Ishanti graduated her first degree in business statistics in 2004 and completed master's degree in economics at University of Colombo in 2009. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Ishanti to share with us about the paper on important of PPP, existence of integrated system when strengthening national statistics office role in a point of view of national accounts compiler. Thank you very much, Mr. Isanti Kula Tilika. Now is the floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Is this is that okay? Yes. Good afternoon. Very, uh, very nice uh, slide there. Yes, thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Okay. I'm glad to see you, everyone, in one platform yeah. at the 2020 Asia Pacific Statistics Week. I'm Nishanti, mm -hmm. currently working at yeah. the Department of Census and Statistics, Sri Lanka, as a senior statistician. Bye bye. Hello. Hello. I wrote my research paper based on the six years of experience I gained through working at the National Accounts Division. The title of my paper is Importance of Public-Private Partnership, that is PPP, Existence of Integrated Systems when Strengthening National Statistics Officer's Role. I'm looking at this study as a National Accounts Compiler. The objectives of the study. There are two objectives. First one is recognize the contribution of the public-private partnership to strengthen the national statistics officer's role. The second one is recognize the importance of existence of integrated systems to strengthen the NSO role. Ultimately, it improved the quality of official statistics. In my studies, I am especially focusing on improving the quality of national account statistics. Then we'll see the contribution of PPP to strengthen the official statistics. PPP is a voluntary collaborative agreement between the public and private sectors. And also it is an important requirement for data sharing. Let's see the role of PPP in conducting establishment surveys. Surveys are the most popular and important data collection technique in NSOs all over the world. In an establishment survey, there are two main parties. Those are the public sector and the private sector. Conducting establishment survey harder and challenging than household survey. Why? It is because we are trying to collect most confidential and sensitive data that the business entity has. Uh, we usually collect uh, the information of employment, turnover, expenditure, information on inventories, etc. Usually a business entity does not reveal this type of information to a third party unless having a prior agreement. At the point of view of NSO, so we face the issue of law response in this case. And the private sector, they have the burden of, they have the issue of respondent burden. So by building up the partnership between the NSO and the private sector community, there is a possibility to reduce the respondent burden to some extent and also increase the low response to a higher response rate. Let's see the DCS experiences regarding this. DCS recently launched a new survey for the information technology services sector. Objective of this survey was to measure the value addition of real value addition of IT industry to the GDP. This was the first ever survey in DCS history which planned to cover only the IT industry uh, sector in a survey. Therefore, DCS decided to get the help of leading IT industry associations in the country when designing this survey. 
At the planning stage, DCS faced an issue of developing an updated sample frame. At this point, all the uh, all the IT industry associations uh, in the private sector they agreed to share their updated company member list with the NSO. It was a great success DCS achieved because having an updated uh, and uh, accurate sample frame leads to develop the basement for a start of a successful survey. In addition, at every stages of planning, the private sector IT industry associations gave their fullest support. Another important point is with the launching of this, this, this survey, this is introduced web-based platform for the establishment service sector. Finally, the survey completed successfully covering the 70% of output in this industry. Now let's move on to see the importance of integrated systems for the compilation of national accounts estimates. National accounts estimates compile based on the primary data and the administrative data sources. It should cover the total entire economy. Usually, administrative data provided through other data gener generating systems. We use value-added tax data from Inland Revenue Department, government accounts data from the State Accounts Department, BOP data from the Central Bank, export-import data from Sri Lanka Customs, and financial reports from business entities. However, these administrative data have not been generated to fulfill statistical purposes. Therefore, when NSO is going to use this for statistical purpose, it has to be more careful about the conceptual base, classifications, and the time reference. In addition, this data having carries more advantages. Those data are almost for free, and they are complete record, no survey errors. In the compilation process, the DZS heavily relies on these administrative data records. These systems yes. provide yes, yes. More, more reliable administrative data for national accounts compilation process. DCS takes every possible actions to keep the coordination and integration between these data generating systems in order to obtain administrative data records more accurately. The conclusion of my paper is public-private partnership is important to strengthen in a so role of preparing quality of quality official statistics and also existence of integrated systems is really important in generating quality statistics. As far as administrative sources are more accurate and reliable, it directly affects in making GDP and other national accounts estimates more accurate. My recommendations are we should conduct more statistical awareness programs for the public sector as well as for the private sector. Also, we should conduct, it, conduct awareness programs on GDP and other national accounts estimates and the way of compiling those indicators, especially for the public and semi-public organizations who provide administrative records. Also, we should take necessary actions to make popular further the NSO among the business community. Thank you. My special thanks should go to Director General of DCS uh, and who support me, everybody. Thank you so much. Stay safe, you all. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Esanti Kolatilaka, for a very uh, stimulating presentation. And of course, again, I would like to congratulate for great time management. Uh, you managed time less than, in fact, less than seven minutes. Thank Ladies you, and gentlemen, uh, our third speaker for this session is Mr. Ricky uh, Yordani. Uh, he is a lecturer at Polytechnic of Statistics, STIS Indonesia. He is now a PhD student at, Price, at Prince of Songkla University, Thailand. It's very interesting uh, from Indonesia and study in Thailand. Uh, he will be presenting today. Uh, on novel approach in outbound tourism statistics in the era of the revolution industry 4.0, case study of Indonesia outbound tourism statistics. This paper is also co-authored by Dini Arifatin, Rifa Rofian, Rofiadi, and Ignatius Aditya Setyadi. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Ricky. 
Mr. Ricky, now the floor is yours. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for everyone all participants in this virtual event 2020 ASEAN Pacific Service Week. Firstly, I want to thank to Mr. Moderator, Mr. Dr. Muhammad Nazir Muhyiddin, and the organizer from UNESCAP who bring this lovely event. And, uh, I'm Ricky Dani, and on behalf of my team, we have had a pleasure to, free, to bring our presentation here with title, Local Approach in Unbound Plastic in the Era of Population Industry 4.0, Case Study of Indonesia, Outbound Tourism Statistics. Firstly, I want to talk about the, the background, the term of tourism, outbound tourism. Outbound tourism refers to activity of visitor crossing the international border from the country of residence. It must meet the requirement in terms of duration. It must be less than a year and has been proposed of uh, has, has been proposed from uh, it is leisure, business, health, visiting relative, etc. Uh, except for walking. Why it is important to discuss about adventuration? Because from WTO, WTO uh, publication in 2019, uh, number of adventuration related to strong economic performance and increment in citizens' income. It's from the fact that the fast rate growth of adventuration of China citizens during the last decades. And how we calculate the adventuration? Uh, UNSD United Nations Administration has recommended for determining for determining the power of outbound visa using an entry or departure card, a specific survey at the border, or observing them from household surveys. And uh, but actually the problem lies because we cannot distinguish between the tourist, national residing abroad, or in Bahasa we call it Tandur, and frequent border crossing of Mufra. In the study, with data from 2018-2019 from the Director General of Limitation, or TGI, which has uh, agreement for exchange data with BPS, National Statistics of Indonesia. It is collected using an integrated platform, a passport scanning machine, procedure for navigation checkpoint across Indonesia. It has 91 airports and 23 harbor, nevertheless, for land cross border gates with a total run of uh, 79 cross border gates, but there are only small number of cross border gates succeed to use integrated passport scanning machine system. In this data, we use seven variables as follows passport number, crossing time, which is arrival, departure, gate name, type of passport, crossing timestamp, gender, and date of birth. We speed data birth because the data generated. It's huge in volume that big data forcing for this need for this statistic, especially for the needs of the official release on a monthly basis with short processing time. Uh, we do the robot automation, the automation was built with compact scalpel for support in this process. For the methodology, we use classification for calculating uh, for distinguish between the the outbound tourists, national residing board, and then the movers using the length of stay and total type of visitor for classifying. Afterward, these two process combined for distinguishing the visitor. Uh, result and discussion part. Okay, this is the chart where we do the classification after we generate data from big data. We do anomalies and then we set the time. This is a uh, uh, We only include the Indonesian passport and then we move to the set the time about two years back from the other summer. And then for all arrival data, which is the pattern to get the time spent in the country, we match the, the passport number. And then we calculate the overall basis of overlap or not. This means that often 
when visitors start playing Quran at the end of the observation period, but then does not know when they will start later. Next, we do the invitation met for those overlapping tips so that trip has a pair. This invitation conduct for each departure with the arrival at the beginning of the period and each arrival with the departure at the begin at the end of the period. The next invitation made to the trip that has departed during the observation period but arrived before the observation period. The, the invitation arrival met at the start of the, of the observation period. Mm-hmm. After the after after with the, infer, the invitation, we can call the frequent. This is the frequent the length of stay. We use 104 trip. If over 104 uh, trip, we assume that there are a frequent border crosser or mover visitor. And then if the less, we can call it again and to distinguish between the national shooting board and the outbound tourist. If time spent less than one year in Indonesia, they uh, we assume that they are national setting board. If stay more than one year, then they are the outbound. This is the percentage of visitor type from the type immigration checkpoint. Uh, the first I thought her border cross border. Uh, the, the 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 green the green uh, the green pie is the outbound visitor and the blue blue pie is the national sitting board and the red is the frequent border question. discussion. Even though this study is the report of concern study, but its success decreased the three type of Indonesian citizen visitor. The study could inform outbound risk number calculation which can be combined with which can be combined with the outbound and one survey for improving the national tourist imbalance. Furthermore, the frequent border crosser or mover as another mechanism besides possible for entering and living in the country. Because they could less be detected. You can see from the the, the, the live uh, figure. Figure one has improved only on cross border gate did not have the grand border crosser. It indicates the exam for dealing with the immigration policy or has another mechanism for entering and leaving the country. Nowadays, BPS and other software mechanism for this case, BPS use uh, MPD or mobile person data for improving the flow number of the question. Maybe that's our result for this study. And then we'll give the floor back to the, motor, the Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much eh, for uh, an informative presentation by Mr. Ricky Yordani. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now is our first question and answer session. So now we open uh, the session uh, for about 50 minutes. So if, the, our, if our audience has questions or would like to make comments, please send your message in the text in the meeting chat. If speaker wish to make a statement or intervention during the meeting, uh, click uh, raise your hand a uh, few Organizer, we allow you to do so. Do that, correct. Any, any, we will say any question? Very much. Okay, at the moment, uh, while we uh, 
any wait for any question uh, perhaps uh, we can proceed for the quiz uh, that prepared by the organizer please we can proceed with the quiz Miss, uh, to answer. Huh? Yeah, some question. Okay. Uh, 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 now I, I would like give the the to floor to Miss uh, Indrayani. Uh, I think we have a few question uh, in the in the screen. Eh? Uh, Miss. Uh, Miss Indriani, you like to, ni, uh, uh, ni, to to provide the ni, uh, answer for the the question uh, there. We we put the question on the screen. Okay. Uh, I would like to answer the question. Uh, okay. For number one, uh, why before 2012, AFSI with and without EMTR indicators have compatible movements? Uh, the answer is uh, because the growth of EMTR in Indonesia tends to be stable uh, before 2012. Uh, the growth of EMTR in Indonesia tends to be stable, but uh, after 2012, uh, there are uh, there is uh, fluctuative movements, and in 2018, uh, the money transaction ratio has rapidly increased. So the answer is A because the growth of EMTR in Indonesia tends to be stable before 2012, and two, uh, which one is not the objective of measuring financial stability indicators through? Uh, the answer is uh, the uh, which one is not the objective. So, uh, all of the options is true, but in my research, uh, that uh, not the objective is to forecast the condition of financial system stability in a country. And A and B uh, is true to see the development of the financial system through global and domestic indicators and to describe the creation of financial system stability in one certain value from time to time. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Now we can uh, uh, proceed to the uh, uh, answer for the uh, uh, for Miss Isanti. We have several uh, uh, questions over there uh, on the screen. Miss Insanti? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I will move on to the uh, quiz session now. The first question is, uh, what is the responsible government institution for preparing countries' official statistics? It's really the National Statistics Office. Uh, in a country, the, for preparing the for official statistics, the National Statistics Office is the responsible government institution. The second question is, what is the um, point which did not describe National Statistics Office's role? Uh, National Statistics Office's role is mainly it's conducting census surveys and compiling indicators and indices. Special and also it is in most of the countries, National Statistics Office is responsible for compiling national accounts estimates too. And the sec uh, third one is, uh, what is the main macroeconomic aggregate compiled under the national accounts estimates? Under the national account estimates uh, and also uh, in the economic statistics, the main macroeconomic aggregates 
aggregate produced under NAE is the gross domestic product, we say GDP. So the, this is the first, uh, in the sequence of accounts, we uh, basically uh, estimate this gross domestic product at the first account, production account, and then in other accounts, there are several aggregates uh, follows. So the main aggregate uh, compiled under the national accounts estimate is gross domestic product. And how is uh, the ne next question is how pub how public private partnership plays in relation to statistics in relation public private partnership in relation to statistics is it is an important requirement for data sharing between the public sector and also the private sector and the, and also the uh, but by building up the public private partnership there is a possibility to expand the capacity of the National Statistics Office. Thank you. Thank you very much. And of course, now Thank we you, also sir. have, uh, yeah. uh, we have also uh, some question uh, here for, uh, for Mr. Ricky or Danny. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. This is the question. What are the difference between outbound tourists, national siding board, and frequent border crosser? <clears throat> uh, actually, uh, the difference can be discussed by its duration and then uh, the length of stay. <clears throat> okay, if the length of stay, uh, the visitor length of stay in the in the in, in their resident hometown is less than one year the visitor would be outbound tourist or frequent border crosser but if the 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 visitor stay uh, in outside their hometown country they will be uh, the national residing abroad. Uh, for the distinction between the outbound tourist and the frequent border crosser uh, it based on the frequent of the visitor crossing the international border we adjust that uh, uh, for the frequent of trip is 104. It means that uh, for for two years, that's for two years. It means that uh, every week uh, they will come to Indonesia. It means that the, the country of residence of the visitor, and then if less than 104, they must be out of country. But if uh, over 104 trips, they will be a mover. And then the second is. What are the relevant using the data for in tourism uh, or visitor statistics? Okay, actually, uh, uh, we can measure how many uh, visitor comes to, to to the country using uh, passport scanning machine and also mobile version data. Uh, now, uh, mobile version data in Indonesia already implement. We calculate the mover, the frequent border crosser. Uh, that have uh, land border gates, uh, for example, between Indonesia and Malaysia, Indonesia and uh, uh, Brunei Darussalam, uh, Indonesia and uh, Timor uh, Timor Leste. Okay, that. And then for this, uh, for 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 our research, we use uh, big data for calculate the data from DGI, Director General of Immigration. And then uh, we, we we have daily basis database from the Directorate General of Immigration that, and then we process it and then we calculate the number of uh, visitor for our paper number of outbound visitor. Okay, I think that's the answer for the question. Thank you. I give the floor back to Mr. Moderator, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ricky. And uh, to all everyone, that's uh, about time we have. Uh, again, thank you very much uh, uh, to the all audience uh, for your question. And of course, uh, we can continue to have the very, uh, 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 uh
we can need uh, for the explanation or clarification maybe uh, everyone can make use the uh, uh, chatbot again here on behalf of uh, escape uh, i would like to thanks uh, to all the our uh, speakers uh, for this uh, first session uh, miss uh, isliani uh, miss uh, isanti and mr ricky Perhaps uh, as a uh, normal way, we have can give a big uh, clap to all uh, all the presenters. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will take uh, about five minutes short break. Uh, now uh, we we uh, uh, during this break we we uh, share we all want uh, let have a relax a little bit. Uh, our uh, community statistic uh, song, uh, statistic bloom in harmony. Uh, please uh, enjoy uh, the song, and we will return uh, for another three speaker right after this. So we will come back at the Bangkok time at one fifty. Together, statistics are form of water. We will always live it up. So let us live in solidarity, and in the world arena, we'll succeed. It is statistics that will come to be. The Just like fire that ignites the 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now we come back again. We come back uh, for the uh, next part of our session. So for this uh, session, we would like to ask uh, our first speaker, Ms. Yusrina Mama Yusuf, uh, to deliver her presentation on the study on measuring the sustainable of tourism. MST in Malaysia, in Malaysia. with co-authors uh, Azuni Zamzul and Malati uh, Ponusami. Uh, Ms. Yusrina Mahmoud Yusuf is currently working as the Principal Statistics Director in National Account Division, Statistics Division, Department of Statistics Malaysia. She graduated a bachelor degree in statistics from University Technology Mara UITM Malaysia. Without further ado, I would like to invite uh, Miss Rina to deliver uh, her papers. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Miss Rina from the Department of Statistics Malaysia. I would like to present the slide on the implementation of measuring the sustainability of tourism MST in Malaysia challenges and initiatives. Okay, dengan bagi Dato' Sri, uh, ladies and gentlemen, objective of this paper is to inform the implementation of MST in Malaysia as well as reviewing the availability of existing data for such implementation and the constraint inherent in the compilation measuring the sustainability of tourism, MST. As for introduction, MST is an international statistical framework for measuring tourism's role in sustainable development. The Sustainable Tourism Expert Working Group was established at the 6th UNWTO International Conference on Tourism Statistics, Sustainable Tourism Measurement in Manila in June 2017. Malaysia has been invited to join a such committee on the MST Expert Working Group on matters related to the SDGs and the implementation of the MST in 2018 Madrid. For the implementation of MST in Malaysia, the Department of Statistics Malaysia, DOSM, is the patron of this development and also involved the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Malta, Malaysia. The objective of MST is to measure progress towards three SDG related to the MST as shown in the slides such as SDG 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth, SDG 12, Responsible Consumptions and Production, and SDG 14, Life Below Water. The aim of MST is to achieve sustainable tourism as a continuous process. Next slide. The statistical framework measuring the sustainability of tourism as F MST is an intersection between data producer, data sources, and the use of data for reporting and analysis, decision support tools, and tools. The data producers comprise such as the government departments, national statistical office, technical agencies, local survey, and private sectors. Data source can be whether from business surveys, household and visitor surveys, administrative and big data or geo geo-partial data. For your information also, the MST development scope is referring to three key areas, namely economic, environment, and social. The related reference material are the consultation draft statistical framework for measuring the sustainability of tourism by UNWTO, tourism satellite account recommended methodological framework by UNSD, and system of environment economic accounting Central Frame CF by United Nations, New York. In a final stage, information can be used to provide decision support tools through monitors 
monitoring and reporting, evaluation and assessment, and modeling and projections. From decision support tools also, the policy teams, aspiration or targets could be helped for the users in the ministries, tourism administrators, researchers, or private se sectors. Okay, next. For the implementation status, subgroup structure of Malaysia, MST, set up in December 2018, include members from internal dorsum, seven subject matters divisions, and representative from Ministry of Turis Tourism, Arts and Culture Malaysia. And we do a uh, meeting, consultation, workshop session, study the scope, framework, and methodology, action plan to implement MSC in Malaysia, work out to study on data availability and data sources. As been shown in the slide, most of the data need are still under development and partially available. So the challenges uh, to Malaysia set up MSD is the data collection in the physical flow for SIA for the specific tourism industry are uh, uh, difficult and is involving multidisciplinary agencies. Lack of knowledge and beneficiary of MSD implementation among related agencies and also the challenging in data compiling to meet the requirement of MST, readiness of data set consumption by tourism industries and its specific to survey. And also to improve, improve status. So we do some steering community to strengthen the technical coordination in MST development involved with multidisciplinary agency based on field specificity MST implementation plan, we do proper timely planning to achieve the goals effectively in line with the target of the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs agenda. Capacity building, we do need consultation from the UNWTO or relevant international bodies for the purpose of strengthen capacity building in this area. So for the conclusion, Malaysia commits to continue to support the UNWTO and remain as a part of the subgroup of the working group of experts on MST. Malaysia MST Technical Working Group consistently discuss on the technical and current issues of MST education. With this, I'm ending my presentation for today. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for uh, very uh, uh, good presentation. Eh? Very interesting presentation by Ms. Yusrina. For the next speaker, I would like to call uh, Mr. Zainal Abidin uh, Mutalib. Eh? He is Assistant Director of Population and Demographic Statistics Division, Department of Statistics Malaysia. <coughs> he is graduated in Actuarial Science and Diploma in Statistics from University Technology Mara UITM Malaysia. And for today, he will be presenting uh, a paper, the title of the paper, Spatial Analysis, Population Aging of Multi-Ethnic Malaysia in Rural Area. And this paper uh, uh, with the co-authors Muhammad Fazil Ismail and Nadia Miskiman. Uh, Mr. Zainal, uh, you may proceed now. Uh, thank you to the Mr. Chairman. Uh, can you see uh, my slide? Can Can you see my my slide presentation? Uh, not Not yet. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon to Dr. Sri and all my fellow participants. My name is Zainal Abidin bin Abdul Muttalib from Department of Statistics Malaysia. I would like to share my slide topic on spatial analysis, aging population of multi-ethnic in rural area Malaysia. So according to United Nations, aging were divided into three groups, namely aging society, when the population is 65 years old and above 7% of the population. A society above 14% of the population, super A society above 20% of the population. 
But in Malaysia, as stated in senior citizen national policy, Malaysia will expect it to be an aging if this group is 60 plus, reach 50% of the population. And forecast by Department of Statistics Malaysia, Malaysia will become aging nation in the year 2030. Today, Malaysia already reached 11.1% out of Malaysian population. As we know, Malaysia population is unique, which comprises multiple ethnicity. This paper focuses on the three major ethnic groups, Malay, Chinese, and Indian. The percentage of current population projection 2019 in rural area, Malaysia is 9.6%. Uh, Chinese 1.12% and Indian 0.28%. And also the changing of urbanization in Malaysia from year 1970 was 26.8, but in 2010 was 70.9. Figure in the top right show the distribution of older person by stratum in the year 2000 and 2010. Based on the percentage in stratum, Senior citizens in the rural area consistently has shown a slight rise in the both year. Next, the aging effect is also more pronounced in rural area than urban location due to migration, loss of the younger population to the city and trend for people to retire in rural area. Here so the five-year interstate net migrant by state, Malaysia by year 1980-2010. As we can see here, blue bar means people moving in from different states, and red bar means people moving out from their origin state. There exists some exciting pattern by location and space. Senior citizens in the rural area consistently has shown a slight rise in the both year. From the map, we can see the concentration of senior citizens in Malaysia rural area through changes pattern in monochromatic color scheme in the map. The hollow refer to the urban area and color scheme for refer for rural area. The graph show the comparison distribution of senior citizen population by state and district in the year 2000 and 2010, and related distribution pattern also was found in the 2010 census. For senior citizen population in Malaysia, rural area 2010, there are three states. Uh, with the highest percentage of senior citizen, the state were Malacca 13.22%, Perak 12.54%, and Perlis 12.36%. And also you can see the blue bar here, Sarawak has the largest population of all the person aged 60 years or above in 2010, but it is still a relative young state. The spatial distribution for the ethnic group in these three states is shown in the map. The majority of the ethnic in these three states were Malay and Bumiputra ethnic, followed by Chinese and Indian ethnic. Here is for the map for the Melaka. Blue dot means uh, Malay, yellow is for the Chinese, and green for the Indian. And we can see that senior citizens in Melaka were, were concentrated in two districts, namely Alugaja and Jasen. For Pera, the three districts that recorded the highest number of senior citizens were Hile Pera, Kerian, Larut, and Matang. Meanwhile, in Perlis, the population of their senior citizens was mostly distributed in sub-districts, Sanglang, Titi Tinggi, Kurong Anai, and Arau. As a key conclusion, this application was successful in producing a precise allocation of senior citizens, mapping by state and district in Malaysia. By any measure, all the percent in rural Malaysia are increasing in absolute number and its proportion. The distribution of senior citizens is unbalanced and dispersed, and this pattern will continue to expand in the future. Concentration are toward the estate, Perlis, Kedah, Pulau Pinang, Perak, Selangor, Negeri Sembilan, Melaka and Johor on the west coast of Malaysia. There are wide variation in the rate of aging by ethnicity and geography. Disease and mortality pattern are changing, but health expenditure, healthcare and social welfare system in Malaysia are facing novel challenge. Changing demography are also bringing new opportunity. Under the NEC Malaysia Plan, recommendation development program need are monitoring the specific need of the age. 
especially for the citizen aged 60 years and above. Last but not least, are we ready for the end aging Malaysia? Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for a uh, wonderful presentation, uh, Mr. Zainal Abidin. Eh? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, our uh, last speaker uh, for this session, uh, Mr. Justin Angelo O. Tuenteng. Mr. Justin has been working in the Philippine Statistics Authority since 2016. Prior to working uh, uh, P in PSA, he graduated from the University of Philippines uh, de Liman with a Bachelor of Science in Statistics degree in 2016. He, also, he is currently taking up his Master of Science in Statistics from uh, De La Salle University, Manila. So for today, he will be presenting uh, the paper, the, the title of the paper, Going beyond measuring the rural access index in the Philippines, and uh, this paper uh, is the co-author uh, with Patricia and Arsen Buna Ventura and Joy Angela H. Garish. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Justin. Mr. Justin, now uh, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to present uh, our research entitled Going Beyond Measuring the Rural Access Index in the Philippines. So for a brief overview of our research, uh, the SDGs or the Sustainable Development Goals were established by the United Nations in 2015 to provide an inclusive and sustainable life for every people, regardless of age, gender, race, and other vulnerabilities, and protection to the planet and the environment by 2013. And one of the indicators of the SDGs is SDG 9.1.1, or the proportion of the rural population within two kilometers of an all season road, or also known as Rural Access Index. A precursor of this research aims to use the World Bank methodology using the available data in the Philippines and use one region as a pilot study. For the methodology, the paper has two parts. The first one is the computation of the rural access index for the whole Philippines. And the second part would be the comparison of the computed RAI with some social and economic indicators. For a bit background, the data that were used were the grid population uh, data from the world pop, uh, administrative maps containing administrative regions. For the Philippines, it's divided into the whole Philippines, regions, and provinces, until the lowest level, which is the barangay. We also use our road maps, and that's all. The first part follows the same methodology employed by Astologo et al. using the World Bank methodolog methodology as its base. So the whole uh, computation of the REI is divided into three parts. The computation of the rural population uh, on the particular administrative region, the computation of the population living within two kilometers of an all-season road, and then the computation of the REI by dividing the population living within two kilometers and the population living in the rural areas. The second part focuses on comparing the results of the first part with the social indicators from the National Demographic Health and Health Survey uh, in 2017 and the economic indicator gross regional domestic product. So some of the results and discussion the three regions with the highest REI are Ilocos region, the Central Luzon, and Central Visayas. These regions 
are known to be uh, highly econ- economically active in terms of uh, the country. The three regions with the lowest RAI are Region 12, the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, and the Cordillera Administrative Region. When we compare this RAI with the uh, uh, economic and social indicators, it's found that the regions with the lowest REI, ARM, and the Cordillera Administrative Region also have high incidence of unimproved water supply, low vaccination rate, low percentage of births delivered in a health facility, and low percentage of births delivered by a skilled provider. They also have the lowest share to the total Philippines gross domestic product. The methodology of computing the REI can still be improved as it is. We can also add some other elements such as the presence of bodies of water, elevation, presence of other physical structures. Comparing the REI with social and economic indicators, we allow policymakers to craft efficient and effective policies. It can also boost the use of the resources to allocate it more efficiently. That's all. Thank you. Hello? Thank you very much uh, uh, for the interest, interesting uh, uh, presentation, uh, Mr. Justin. Uh, now, uh, we move to uh, a very uh, important one is the Q&A session. Yeah? So now we open uh, the session, uh, the Q&A session for about 15 minutes. And as Okay, we have several questions. Eh? Uh, Miss Yusrina and also uh, from Miss Yana. Uh, we have one question uh, for Miss Yana. How will Malaysia perform in TSA as compared to other Asia countries? So, Miss Yusrina, you would like to respond to that question? Nabagira uh, Tosri, ladies and gentlemen, for Malaysia, um, for TSA, the rate added of Malaysia tourism industry in 2018 attained 15.2%. So, um, Malaysia also involved as expert group under UNWTO working group to improve the methodology of the SA compilations. And currently, Malaysia, um, in we, also, we are in the MIS, um, MIS an international body for strengthening our compilation in TSA. So, this is uh, all of um, uh, as what I can say uh, for Malaysia uh, achievement in TSA uh, compared to others uh, ASEAN country. That's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Miss Yusrina. Okay, we have another other question there uh, for Mr. Zainal. Uh, the question: uh, Do you plan to enhance the study to include Sabah and Sarawak rural subpopulation? Uh, because we know that range of ethnicity in Sabah and Sarawak were quite broad. Mr. Zainal would like to... Uh... Okay, thank you for the uh, question. Uh, basically, for the time being, uh, we are not yet focused on the minority ethnic. However, uh, maybe after census 2020, uh, we will look back according to the priori uh, priorities. Uh, I think after the census 2020, uh, maybe we we'll look into the suggestion uh, to go the, for the ethnic in Sabah Sarawak. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sri. Okay. And also we have uh, another question for you. Uh, uh, they asked about uh, if correlational analysis was done to interrelate the characteristic of the location where the aging population reside and the socioeconomic characteristic of the uh, location itself. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, basically, uh, 
on this paper, we are only focusing on the spatial distribution and uh, relationship between urban and rural area and the uh, aging population. But uh, like I mentioned for the previous, maybe after the uh, data, uh, the census 2020, maybe we will look into it. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Zainal, and also uh, Balkis for the question. And also, uh, 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 we have also a question uh, for Mr. Justin here, uh, from Mr. Kim, Kiman Irwin. The question, uh, what are your findings on the, on the relationship between RAI and the social economy indicators? Mr. Um, Justin, yeah. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, based on the preliminary results of our research, we can say that um, regions with uh, with uh, low RAI can have low social and economic uh, indicators. But these results are still up for validation and are not are not yet final. So, for uh, for the purpose of our research, uh, and these are just preliminary findings. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Justin. Uh, yeah, you have another question, yeah? We have a question uh, uh, for Mr. Justin also. Uh, what, is, what is the urban, what is the urban and also the rural percentage in the Philippines? Mr. Justin, there are question for you. They are asking uh, about the percentage uh, uh, of urban and rural. Uh, I'll get in back to that to the question. I just look for the answer. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Justin. And also, uh, we have question uh, for you, Srina. Ms. Srina, they're asking uh, what are the steps taken by Dawson to implement MST at the moment? Ladies and gentlemen, um, for Malaysia. Uh, currently, we um, set up the steering community among um, um, among uh, DOSM, the Department of Statistic um, Internal uh, Division, and also we are planning to do uh, discussion between uh, related agencies or ministries. Um, and also, we do need uh, uh, technical coordination in MSC development uh, that involve other agencies related to the uh, environment also. And currently, um, Malaysia, we are planning to preparing a report based on the ability data in um, Malaysia that's suitable for this uh, MST report. Thank you. All right, I think uh, and, uh, that's the only uh, about time we have. So again, uh, on behalf of the uh, organizer, ESCAP, uh, we would like to extend our uh, really uh, big thanks uh, to all the our uh, three speakers uh, uh, for the second session, Mr. Srina, Mr. Zainal, and Mr. Justin. So maybe we have can uh, give a big clap to uh, three of the our speakers. Thank you. Uh, all right, uh, I would like to uh, make my uh, conclude uh, remark on uh, this session. It is uh, my great pleasure that uh, we have very fruitful discussion. I uh, thought I think 90 minutes is not enough. I would like to take this moment to thank all the speakers and the authors for your excellent uh, moderating and summarizing uh, the presentation and the question and answer the, uh, discussion. Of course, uh, we, let, we have to also thank uh, very much to the technologies. So we don't have any uh, issues on the connectivity 
uh, throughout the 90s minutes. Eh. I would like to offer a special word of gratitude uh, to our organizer at the 2020 Asia Pacific Statistic uh, Weeks, APS 2020, and SCAP Committee for giving me the opportunity to be one of the moderator in this event. Based on presentation uh, being delivered, uh, I observe your excellent presentation and active discussion. So I can conclude that the purpose of the event has been completely uh, accomplished. Of course, uh, based on the in uh, our interaction, uh, I believe uh, there will be a lot of the uh, subsequent uh, research and also uh, how we can uh, improve and uh, perhaps the more important when we uh, have the paper uh, been done, uh, how we can bring that uh, research to the to the our institution to to our institution, how to be implement and and also uh, of course, uh, hopefully uh, for next year uh, program, maybe we can uh, report uh, the, the 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 progress. And uh, how the 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 based on the also based on the feedback from the audience, maybe uh, the, the 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 dimension of the analysis uh, in very uh, various uh, uh, dimension or segment can be uh, shared uh, later on. Of course, with the uh, very great opportunity, I think the the knowledge the the, the knowledge uh, is everywhere. But uh, the more important is how we can share the knowledge in terms of the uh, empirical. So the empirical normally is it must be on the uh, the, the number, the, the information and the, the statistic. So here at the chat box, escape secretary has uh, posted eh, the link uh, for the evaluation form for today's session. So uh, I kindly request eh, uh, for the audience. Eh, uh, to take a little bit your time uh, to fill up uh, the uh, the evaluation form. Of course, uh, this evaluation form will be a really a great bonus to secretary uh, later on uh, to to re-examine uh, what can be uh, done to improve and also uh, be generous also uh, to give a good comment and a constructive comment. Uh, the, uh, he can talk a lot. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so the again, uh, the uh, I will to summarize. Uh, I'm back to my <laughs> my uh, uh, prepared uh, 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 material here. The 2030 agenda is integrated development agenda across economic, uh, social, and environment domain. Integrated statistic can be defined as the ultimate outcome of integrated system of producing and using statistics. Furthermore, the integrated statistics give new insights and be valuable to the decision maker. This, in this session, we can see the importance of integrated statistics for the integrated analysis. Comprehensive and integrated analysis is needed in order to achieve the 2030 agenda, especially in development planning. Uh, Indonesia, uh, the, the presenter uh, explained how aggregate financial stability index, FSI, can be used as alternative to measuring the Indonesia financial stability and properly describe the actual condition of the financial system. It also needs to include the e-money component as a digital financial services. E-money transaction ratio, EMTR, contribute positively to financial stability. If I can bring uh, this uh, is, uh, on the proposal on e-money to uh, put in the context now in the, the pandemic uh, environment we are facing now, I think uh, the e-money, the e-wallet, I think there's something that is really important because, uh, because of the social distancing to be, have to be practiced. <laughs> And on the next paper from uh, our colleague from Sri Lanka, uh, uh, she shared the experience on how the Department of Census and Statistics Sri Lanka uh, conducted a survey on IT industry to the IT company for the national account estimate. 
this paper also highlight the importance of the public private partnership i think uh, in the era of sdg uh, it is very important eh? uh, the, the 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 civil society uh, also uh, to come together and of course uh, to do the data sharing among the uh, data provider and the private sector involvement is involved the integrated data from the company and administrative data and it proved that public private partnership contributes to the success of the survey and the second paper from our colleague from uh, indonesia is on the case study on the novel approach using big data for the outbound prison statistic by the passport scanning machine has been done and this Can study has specifically this uh, study has again suka kau meninggalkan nama dia <laughs> this study has successfully produced the uh, the distinguished three type of indonesian citizen visitors uh, which are outbound tourists national residing abroad and frequent broad, uh, border crosses from the visitor i think this is very important eh? because um, uh, if we, for example the the national of indonesia indonesia is hiding in other country so we this track this uh, model or big data we can know how the uh, their uh, tourism related expenditure and their tourism related activity uh, been done by uh, national uh, citizen in the outside countries eh? so i think I, i'm my personal view i think uh, malaysia also maybe can learn eh? from uh, our our paper uh, our colleague maybe we can have uh, the uh, uh, separate discussion eh? later and also of course the other country also can uh, benefit uh, from this uh, uh, effort and the paper from uh, um, uh, malaysia uh, explain on how implementation and uh, implementation of measuring the sustainable of tourism the challenges and the initiative the statistical framework for measuring the sustainability of the tourism uh, as fmst is been adopted of course uh, during this time uh, uh, the tourism activity is not uh, really uh, ni uh, been really uh, in the operation at the moment but uh, we pray hard that we will be come back to the normality and the issue on the sustainable uh, tourism uh, for sure is becoming very uh, important uh, for all of us and at the moment uh, Malaysia has implemented the tourism satellite account TSA and the system of environmental economic account TSA to measure the dimension of the tourism environment however it needs to be expanded within the TSA framework to reflect the tourism industry and also to explore the relationship between SEA account for individual environmental flow such as water energy waste and tourism activities partial analysis also uh, been presented today uh, by uh, speaker uh, from malaysia he share the finding of the population aging in malaysia rural area from the ethnic perspective with partial distribution i think issue on the aging population is uh, everyone everyone know that many country uh, move toward the aging society this application has successful on producing the uh, precise allocation on the analysis of the senior citizen distribution and last uh, ni, the paper from uh, our colleague from philippines uh, uh, measure the sdg 9.1.1 uh, referring to road accessibility which uh, rural access index rai rai will help policy maker plan for future for the future road projects in the rural area as well as to formulate rural transport program that will provide better life to the to the people in the rural, in the rural areas i think that's a little bit the summarize uh, the gist of the uh, paper yeah, i'm uh, not really uh, good in summary that i think <laughs> um uh, i would like invite everyone to go through again uh, the, the the papers and the material and finally on the behalf of aps 2020 weeks organizer i would like to express uh, my appreciation to all the participants for taking time of your busy duties 
to join to join this virtual event. I hope once again we are in a good health and together we fight again the COVID-19 pandemic. So I wish all all the best and pray for us to back to the normality. I wish the future prosperity uh, for all the participants, part, uh, the participation and organizing organization and the stability of the Pacific region. And I dedicated my special time to all the escape team, uh, Ms. Jenga, Ms. Jema, Ricky, and of course, all the people work behind the scene uh, to put up all the slides and also uh, in terms of the technicality of the technology. Again, thank you very much. Uh, hope one day we can uh, uh, can uh, physically um, uh, meet, uh, meet together in uh, not necessarily in Bangkok in other part of the world. Thank you very much again, and very good uh, afternoon and very good uh, if the, uh, you are in the in the morning. Uh, have a pleasant day ahead, and if you are in the about to the uh, sunset. <laughs> Uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, good evening. Huh? Good evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Yeah. So.